Is it better to exercise before or after eating? And more specifically, is it better for your blood sugar to exercise before or after eating? Well, this is a question that I think about often and apparently many of you do as well because I've gotten a few requests to try to figure this out. So without further ado, here is another blood sugar experiment where I try to answer the question for myself because your body might be different. Is it better for my blood sugar to exercise before or after eating? All right, let's get into it. All right, so it's 6 a.m. and I got up extra early to do this before the kids get up, so I am feeling pretty tired. But day one of this experiment, I am going to be doing an intense 20 minute HIT workout, high intensity interval training workout, before eating a pretty high carb two waffle breakfast to see what is gonna happen with my blood sugar. So, this workout on YouTube is from Bully Juice and it is called intense 20 minute fat melting hit cardio. I just discovered Bully Juice last night for the purpose of this video. I've never done any of his workouts before, but they seem pretty, pretty intense when I did a preview. So I am looking forward to it. So here we go. <laughs> Bully juice absolutely destroyed me. That was a really, really intense workout. I would consider myself to be in like pretty good shape. That was challenging. Um, I'm actually looking forward to doing it again for part two of this experiment so that I can continue to build my strength. But that was really, 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 really difficult and I'm sweating like crazy and I can't get myself up off of this wall but I'm going to pop my two waffles into the oven. I'm gonna hop into the shower and just rinse down because I am dripping in sweat and then I will come back to you to see what is going on with my blood sugar. I just checked my blood sugar really quick after getting out of the shower and it looks like my blood sugar is steadily rising. So it went from 85 to 90. Five, I assume my body is starting to release some of that stored glucose to kind of replenish um, the glucose that I used up during my workout and I'm still, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. My brain feels a little bit foggy. All right, one last quick blood sugar check here before I start digging into my waffles. And I'm surprised that it's um, showing steady, like pretty steady at 87 because my hands are shaking and I feel kind of nauseous. I think I need to get food in me ASAP. Um, again, I was expecting to see a big drop, but I'm not. But physically, I am feeling the symptoms of kind of low blood sugar, but I guess my body is doing a pretty good job of keeping me stable. All right, so I'm gonna dig into these delicious strawberry waffles. Also, I topped my waffles with just half a serving of almond butter. One, because um, strawberry and almond butter go great together. And two, I just didn't wanna shock my body with just carbs. So I did add a little bit of fat and protein on top of there. So again, I'm gonna eat this, I'm so hungry. Do you guys see these chunks of strawberry jam inside of this waffle? I'm telling you, it is so good. I just finished off my waffles <clears throat> and I think I have almond butter in my teeth. Anyway, two waffles was a lot. I'm extremely full. I think two waffles is supposed to be one serving. I have the box here. Oh, three waffles is supposed to be one serving. Oh, I don't know how anyone can eat three of these waffles. I feel really, really stuffed with just the two. The almond butter obviously has something to do with it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really full. So three waffles is 45 grams of carbs, which means each waffle is 15 grams of carbs, which means I had 30 grams of carbs with the two waffles and then half a serving of the almond butter was 
3.5 grams of carbs. So like 33 and a half grams of carbs in that meal, which is um, a lot for breakfast for me. So I'm gonna just see what my blood sugar does here. All right, so I tested my blood sugar at the one hour mark and I was a little bit surprised at how high my blood sugar spiked. It looks like it almost hit close to, I don't know, probably 130-ish. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't expecting that. I thought that the workout would do a little bit more. But interestingly, you can see here on the graph that my blood sugar does a little sharp dip before it kind of heads back up. And I can only assume that that is due to the workout that I did that made my blood sugar drop. And then obviously after I ingested 33.5 grams worth of carbs and my blood sugar started heading back up. So um, I'll test it again at the two hour mark and then we'll see if um, my blood sugar does anything interesting into lunchtime. But right now the spike is very, very noticeable. All right, I'm a little bit shy of the two hour post meal mark, but I was curious, so I scanned my sensor anyway, and I am back down to 85. So an interesting observation here is that even though my blood sugar did spike, it came back down to baseline within an hour, which is really, really good, especially given that I ate waffles, which is pure carbs um, for breakfast. Because I worked out, probably my metabolism was high, my body was functioning really well in terms of burning glucose. So within 60 minutes, my blood sugar came right back down to baseline. Exercise honestly is so, so good for your metabolic functioning. And I was feeling really nauseous, but now I feel pretty energized. And um, let's see how long the effects of exercise last throughout the day. All right, so I'm getting hungry again, so I'm gonna eat one of these tiger figs from Trader Joe's. I never tried figs whole like this before. I think I can just eat the whole thing. So I'm gonna wash this and eat it, and then I'm gonna have leftover avocado. Um, I mean, really the teeniest, tiniest bit. as just a little tiny snack because my stomach is growling. I ate that, I'm still hungry, so I'm gonna finish off half of this nut bar that my husband left behind. So half of this would be eight grams of carbs, and there's eight grams of fiber in this thing, so I'm getting four grams of fiber in this alone. So I'm gonna finish that off as my snack. Okay, so really crazy observation here. I ate almost an entire ice cream sandwich from Trader Joe's. Um, I probably ate like four fifths of it and the little tiny piece of discipline that I had said, all right, stop eating it now. So um, it, it was a lot of carbs, a lot of sugar obviously. And I just checked my blood sugar and it did not spike. Also, I've been sitting in the car driving for the past 45 minutes, so minimal movement, and my blood sugar isn't spiking. Is it because I worked out earlier this morning that my body is just running on um, optimal speed right now? I don't know, but I'm here to get my eyebrows microbladed, so I'm gonna be sitting in a chair, again, not moving for the next couple hours as well. So I'm interested to see if my blood sugar is maybe going to spike a little bit later, but if it doesn't spike at all, then the power of exercise truly, truly becomes evident. So let's see. I just came out of my appointment and honestly, I thought I might have been having like a hypoglycemic episode because when I was in there, I started to feel like really nauseous and um, yeah, just not well. So I'm out, I rushed out here to check my blood sugar and um, no spike, no spike, no hypoglycemic episode. It might have been because I was like laying down and sometimes when I laying down for a long time, like. I, st I start feeling a little bit lightheaded, but regardless, um, no spike from that ice cream. S so strange. I'm happy, but really, really strange. So, um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's going on. I mean, that that workout was extremely, extremely intense. So that might be why it's having such a long-lasting effect. But if I can do a 20 minute high intensity interval training workout that gets me sweating and then be okay in terms of my blood sugar for the rest of the day. I mean, I, I can definitely make that work in my schedule. 
So day two here, which is eating first and then exercise to see how that impacts my blood sugar. It is now 6.15 a.m. I have my waffles toasting in the oven. I am going to sit and eat it first while watching the Kardashians for five or 10 minutes before hopping into my workout. I am surprisingly really hungry. I usually don't eat breakfast until like well past eight. So um, it's interesting that my body is like really craving food right now. So I'm gonna go enjoy those waffles and the Kardashians and I'll meet you back when I work out. Okay, so I'm about to start my workout here, but I wanted to do a quick recap of day one where I exercised first before eating my waffles. I started out that day with a fasting blood sugar of 87. And then right before I started eating my waffle, I believe I was at about 95. Um, in terms of what happened with my blood sugar is it did spike up to almost 140 and then came back down <clears throat> very quickly within an hour. And then from about 6 45 7 a.m to 4 o'clock that day my blood sugar was doing really really well really no matter what i was eating so that's the quick recap i'm going to start my workout here in just a second <laughs> I thought that workout was gonna be a little bit easier with some waffle fuel in me, but nope, it was just as hard as the first time I did it, maybe even more because my stomach felt really weighed down. I'm used to working out more on an empty stomach typically, so this is new for me. All right, let me test my blood sugar here. Okay, so interesting, it looks like the exercise that stops my blood sugar from spiking up to 140 like it did last time. Um, we'll see how it goes as time goes by. It's not uncommon to see my blood sugar dip when I work out after eating something higher carb and then creep back up after a little bit of time has passed. So I am going to hop into the shower before my kids wake up. I'm gonna chug a bunch of water and then I'll check back in checked my blood sugar right after getting out of the shower and my blood sugar is still on the way down at 80. So the workout is doing a great job of keeping any type of spike with those two waffles at bay. And just an FYI, so after I got out of the shower, I looked at my heart rate and even 15 minutes after I had finished that workout, my heart rate was still at 120 beats per minute, which is crazy. I had mentioned earlier that I considered myself to be in pretty good shape and doing that 20 minute workout at full force for the full amount of time really made me feel a little bit ill and I think with eating the waffles and doing the workout right after like my stomach started hurting a little bit it, it wasn't pleasant but as you saw in day one that workout was extremely effective at keeping my body at optimal sugar burning mode for a big chunk of the day so I mean pros and cons, right? I'm definitely gonna be doing this workout more often when I have the energy to do it. Okay, so I lost a lot of footage from this day where I exercise after eating my waffles. So I'm gonna have to just talk through that day here along with my whole experiment recap. So the last blood sugar check that we did was right after I had gotten out of the shower after I finished my workout, which was about 45 minutes after I had finished eating the waffles. And as you can see here, my blood sugar rose minimally and then came back down to baseline, which was basically my fasting number. But then look at what happens at the one hour mark. So just as I had predicted, my blood sugar started creeping back up, probably as my body was continuing to break down the sugar in those waffles. And maybe my body was also releasing some of that stored glucose to replenish all of the energy that I had burned during the workout. And then at the two hour post waffles mark, my blood sugar looked like a camel's humpback. My blood sugar had gone up, down, up, and down again and then at the almost three hour mark so a little bit shy of the three hour mark you can see that my blood sugar rose a little bit again and then it came back down and then stabilized so from start to finish from when i started my waffles it took about three hours for my blood sugar to come down and stay down now let's compare that to the first day where i exercised first and then ate the waffles so my blood sugar did spike much, much higher, but within about 90 minutes, my blood sugar returned back down to baseline and stayed there. So I thought that that was really interesting, the difference in how long it took for my blood sugar to come back down to normal. I don't know which is better or worse. Do I want a higher spike 
but have my blood sugar return back to baseline quicker or do I want a smaller spike or I guess technically three smaller spikes, but have it take longer for my blood sugar to return back to baseline. My gut tells me that I would rather prefer my blood sugar to spike higher and then return back to baseline faster, but I honestly don't know and I don't really know the science behind it. So leave down in the comments below what you feel like would be better for our bodies. Okay, so let's keep going with day two. So unlike in day one, I wasn't super, super famished after breakfast that I had to eat another snack between breakfast and lunch, which actually I thought was another interesting observation. So on that day when I ate the waffles first, I actually didn't end up having a snack. And then here is my blood sugar an hour after my lunch, and you can see that it's really, really stable. Now, what I ate for lunch was pretty low carb-ish, so I had some leftover um, kai which is Korean marinated meat. I had a teeny tiny portion of leftover white rice and then I put a fried egg on top. So obviously the white rice is a lot of carbs and my body has trouble typically processing it, but otherwise the meat and the eggs are totally fine. And as you can see, my blood sugar was really, really stable. It kind of rose super gently and then came back down. Now, what I should have done on this day was eat another ice cream sandwich to see what would happen to my blood sugar. Because remember, when I exercised first and then ate the waffles, and then later on that day when I had 51 grams of an ice cream sandwich, my blood sugar didn't really have an impact at all. There was barely a dent. But unfortunately, or I guess fortunately for my body, I didn't have access to another ice cream sandwich. I had eaten that ice cream sandwich at my parents' house because my dad really likes to buy desserts and sweets. And I was at home when I filmed the second day and I just, I didn't have access to an ice cream sandwich so I could not eat one. And that really leads to the biggest shocker of this blood sugar experiment. I still can't believe that I ate almost an entire ice cream sandwich, again, 51 grams of carbs, which is mostly purely sugar, and I didn't even pair it with like fat or protein or fiber, I just ate it as is, and there was barely a dent in my blood sugar. I mean, I, I really can't explain it whatsoever. So overall conclusions, can I answer the question for myself, is it better for my blood sugar to exercise before or after meals? Well, based on this single experiment of just one subject, which is me, I think personally for me, I am gonna try to get my workouts in early in the morning on an empty stomach to kind of jumpstart my metabolism and my glucose burning capacity. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm not going to continue going for walks after meals when I can or keep my body moving by doing chores and errands around the house so that I can keep burning that glucose. I'm gonna be doing all of that because that's still really, really, really good for managing your blood sugar. But I think when it comes to setting aside like intentional time, right? Like my workout exercise time, I think that I'm going to try to do it again early in the morning on an empty stomach before my breakfast. I'm gonna have to replicate this experiment again in the future because I think there were a lot of just confounding variables and different factors that probably impacted the results. But if any of you decide to test out for yourself whether it's better for your body to exercise before or after eating, then please come back and leave down in the comments below what you find because I'm super, super interested in how other people's bodies react. All right, thank you all for joining me for another blood sugar experiment video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming content. All right, thank you so much. And I will hopefully see you all next time. Bye.